I'm not Jeffree Star. Yeah. So what Jeffree Star did is none of my business. But I mean, he's very like Yacht Queens, but I'm trying to like take it to the pop star level. I'm always so fascinated about that moment when something goes viral or something happens and you're like, whoop, my life's about to change. When it happened, I didn't even know that you could make that much money off music, but I was making bank. Off of Spotify streams or what? Yeah. Like, I was making like 30K a month. This is the project file to handsome. Obviously, you present very feminine, but you still are a boy. Yeah. Your pronouns are he, him. Yeah, I don't really care about pronouns. Is a part of you still thinking you might be trans? Yeah, but at the same time, like, oh my, this is my room. Yeah. This is like where I do my makeup. I don't really remember because I was like doing a lot of Xanax. So. Was that where you were doing Xanax primarily? Yes. Oh my God. It was like one full year that I don't remember. Let's put it on like yeah. this. Hello. Hello, I'm outside. Okay. Let me come outside. Okay, thank you. Hi. How are you? Oh my god. Hi. I'm literally starstruck. How are you nice doing? Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, you too. You look great. Thank I'm not you. I'm not showing the building, don't worry. I'm hiding where you're at. Thank you for having me. My oh my gosh, nice. It's so hot out here, like I don't have AC either, so it's wicked. You look great. Thank you. Did you get all ready for this or did you already film and stuff? No, I got ready for this because I was like, you know what? I have to be cut. First take with Barely Human. Do a lot of people call you Six Arly Human? Yeah. Um, some people call me Barley. But I'm like, baby, no. Like, How did you think of the name? I was like making punk music and I thought it was like super edgy to be like Barely Human. I kind of just like stuck with it. But I think the six, I thought it was my birth number. But it turns out it's not. So I'm like, bitch, what even is Barely Human? Like, I thought it was something and it's not even what I thought it was. So... You know, it's just a vibe. Isn't it so funny when you make those decisions in the moment and you don't, like, and then a year later, it's like you're known as barely human and it's like this decision you make is going to yeah. follow you the rest of your life. Yeah, it's kind of a crazy name. But honestly, I think it works because, like, no one else is going to name themselves barely human. So I'm the only bitch that pops up. So it works. <laughs> If you are only subscribed to this channel of mine, you are about to be missing out on a lot. I've started a second channel where I'll be posting never-before-seen clips of the interviews, shorter clips from each of these episodes, and also behind-the-scenes moments with my guests that maybe just didn't fit or make sense in the episode as a whole. The link is in my description, so don't forget to subscribe and back to the episode. Thank you so much for doing this. I'm, I feel so honored and I feel like you're just such a hot commodity right now. You must get reached out to all the time for interviews, but it's interesting because when I was looking you up online, I couldn't find that many interviews that you've done. Yeah, I'm just very selective. I don't want to like go into an interview just for like some like clickbait or like, you know, they try to paint me as like some freak or something. You know what I mean? You get nervous that they're going to clip you down and make some post that doesn't seem like what you're actually trying to say and it's going to go yeah. viral and then it's like tarnishing your career before your career's even reached its yes, peak. Yes, that's scary. They could just like cut out a part and then leave in some other part and then it doesn't even like it's not what you meant, but love your videos. So that's why I was like, of course, like, yes, definitely need to do that ASAP. Thank you so much. Of course, yeah, it's a vibe. I can show you my closet. Yes, let's I see have, it. Like, so much, like, I literally have like so many Let me go this way a second. It's, it's like, oh my gosh. It's insane. And these are these are the barely human clothes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Big fur coats everywhere. You know, like Abby Don. A bunch of like trip jackets and you know, I love fur. So oh this my is gosh. my room. Yeah. This is like where I do my makeup. From the last like couple tours I did, I got all these from fans. It's like wow. So many little tiny bracelets. And you save all of them too? Of course. Oh, that's so special. I know. A lot of them have like song names on them. Like, let's see. This one says Hands Up. Mm hmm. Dance Till We Die. I used to like literally only get my clothes from Goodwill. Like, it was like pennies and dimes and a dream. Like, sounds corny as fuck. But you know what I mean? Like, it really was like just something that happened because I was like, I really wanted it. And, you know. You don't have to have the fucking diamonds and glitter and shit. 
to make it cute. I think that you should learn how to not have the diamonds and glitter first to make it cute, and then you can have, you can layer on the diamonds and glitter once you get there. Exactly, yeah. Once you get the glitter and diamonds, then you'll really appreciate it because you knew what it took to get there. I also have like, these are one of my favorite shoes. I don't wear them that much. Oh, those are everything. They're kind of like a, I'd be scared. Like if I wore these at a show, I'd be scared I'd hurt someone. Cause like, they have like little spikes <laughs> everywhere. I feel like this one is like so iconically you. Yeah, that one was my first wig I ever bought. So, and you do you design them yourself? Like you buy it and then you cut it up and dye it yourself? Or do you actually? No, I buy them from people that make wigs. So like, that one you can see is made by Misty Wigs. Mm -hmm. This one's actually made by Drag Daddy Wigs. And then that one's from Etsy. That one is from some place, I don't even know. This one was made by my friend Pal Rice. And she's like so T. This one's my only human one. I love this one. Yeah, this one is like... Is this your newest one? Yeah. This is like the new one. Is it expensive? It was like 500. Which honestly is not bad for like color, cut, style. And it's such and a look. Human. Yeah. Like, I will be buying another one. Yeah, we will purchase. Yeah, yes. Yes. You were saying on the phone, and if you want for me to cut this, let me know. But you were saying on the phone that every time you mention Jeffree Star in an interview, it gets cut. Yeah. Um, maybe it's for my own good, but I don't know. I always say like I'm inspired by like Jeffree Star, because like if you look at me, like you could be able to tell he has good makeup. I'm using his lipstick right now. Um, his music was good, and I mean, yeah, he inspired me, so. I don't think that just being inspired by someone means that you stand behind everything they say, or, yeah, or you know. I mean, I'm not Jeffree Star, yeah. so what Jeffree Star did is none of my business, but he can still make some cool stuff that I'm like, oh wait, that was cool, like, I'm inspired by that, so. Have you met Jeffree Star? No, I haven't. Has he reached out to you or anything? No. That's so interesting to me because it's so clear that like you're inspired by him. I'm surprised he hasn't yeah. damaged you or anything. But let's, let's do a collab for his makeup co collection or something like that. That could be a great situation. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, he's very like yak queen. So go off, like do your yaks and stuff and your meats and all that. So go off. Mm -hmm. But I'm trying to like take it to the pop star level and really take it there. How old are you? 22. Oh my gosh, you're so young. Yeah, I mean, I feel old though. I'm always so fascinated about that moment when something goes viral or something happens and you're like, whoop, my life's about to change. Can you take me back yeah. to that moment? You're at Panera Bread and a song gets so big. Like, take me back to that moment. I used to work at Panera, then I'd come home, then I'd get into like makeup and hair, and then I'd make TikToks, and then I'd stay up till like, you know, 9 a.m., and then I'd wake up at like, you know, 12 p.m. to go to work and do it all over again. And. That was the process. And the first song that ever really did like crazy was Hands Up. For some reason, it just like went crazy. And when it happened, I didn't even know you can make that much money off music, but I was making bank. Like, off of Spotify streams or what? Yeah. Like, I was making like 30K a month. Off of one song? Yeah. Okay. After Hands Up came out, um, I had another song, XOXO. That one started picking up after that. Then I had two. So then I was making like really good money. And then I got scared. Cause I was like, I've never had this much money before, especially in one month. Did you quit your job right away? No, I literally did not quit my job. Cause I was like, what if it just like goes away? Because it's cute right now, but I was still scared. Cause I didn't know how it all worked. And like, it was scary, but I ended up quitting after a couple months of it blowing up and that's simply because i found like management and then like i signed to a label so it's kind of like girl you have to quit like you have to do music all the time now because it's your job and that's the only reason i quit Two monitors, some big old speakers, then my little interface. And this is where you make all your music. Mm -hmm. This is the project file, the hands up. This is literally everything. It's not even that difficult. But yeah, it's actually like, it's, it's like slowed. 
And you're adding all these different layers and stuff yourself? Yeah, like, these are, like, all the vocals. Um, the This part is, like, kind of a lot. There's, like, a lot going on, but... Here's the mixer, too. But then I just, like, sped the whole song up, and that's what came out. I love it. I love seeing, like, the behind the scenes of all the different different layers and stuff that you have to put on there for it to sound the way it sounds. Yeah, literally by itself, it sounds crazy. Like, this is just, like, the main. And then these are all the layers that are on it. It's, like, kind of a lot. Like this. It's, like, harmonies and stuff. Love it. Yeah, and then with the main. Hey! Being gay in Texas is kind of like crazy. I mean, it's not like you're gonna, well, okay. I was about to say it's not like you're gonna get shot, but then I was like, actually, you can. So I think it was kind of hard growing up because there wasn't that many like gay people in my school. I was on the basketball team. I was like friends with all the straight people and I was like acting straight, you know, like, girl, like most of my life, I didn't even know who I was because I was acting like someone else. You know what I mean? I just did a bunch of drugs and I was like kooky and crazy and I came out like senior, sophomore, junior, somewhere. I don't really remember because I was like doing a lot of Xanax. So. Was that what you were doing Xanax primarily? Yes. Oh my God. How'd you find that? Um, well, I had a friend that knew a friend, you know. <laughs> um, it wasn't like I was doing it that much, but I mean, it was like one full year that I don't remember. And do you think that Xanax played a big part in your life because of you grappling with your sexuality? Yeah, I think it was like a lot of things. I mean, my parents argued a lot. I mean, I was already struggling with like, like who the fuck am I, you know? And like, I didn't want to like come out, but it was like a lot of things. It was like crazy. When I was younger, I didn't think I would grow up to like, like be even 18. Like I thought it was like game over. Like there's no way like this is gonna work. Just a bad situation in general. It's interesting hearing you say that you grappled with your sexuality because you're so young and in my head I thought that you know the younger generation was totally okay with being gay and stuff and you'd go to school yeah. you could be whatever non-binary whatever you want to be and it's gonna be accepted so it's interesting hearing you say that you kind of had the same experiences that I had and I'm 10 years older than you you know yeah I mean I definitely got bullied in high school for it definitely Texas a lot of it is like more conservative and they're not really rocking with it like they will just like call you a slur and go on with their day a lot of the things that happened to me helped me a lot because if that never happened to me, I don't know if I'd ever be able to like pussy stunt on these bitches with a pink wig and be like, fuck you, bitch. Like, I don't take shit from anyone. If someone has something to say, they can like eat my ass. That's, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that is, you know, something I've learned from my series and talking to so many people in our community is that we are all such strong people because we've learned how to be strong because we've had to be strong. And, yeah. It, it's become our superpower, you know, yes. and, I, and I'm so I'm so grateful for all the bullying and for all that, you know, all of that time because it's made me such a strong person that has played such a big part in my adult life. Yeah. Once stuff like happens to you like that, like the only thing you can do is turn it into a good thing or it's going to ruin you. Making music was the thing that kind of like helped me get away from like everything and kind of just create my own little world inside my head to think that it was just me like trying to like feel better like i'm glad it helps people feel better like i i just think that's still crazy like i can't even get over that a lot of um just using drugs back then was just me trying to like escape and i didn't know what to do to like fix it so i thought that was fixing it when it was actually making it like way worse because i wasn't dealing with anything but I'm glad I found music, because if I didn't find music, then I wouldn't be able to, like, express myself, like, how I do now. Well, congratulations for, you know, finding yourself through that, because I think a lot of people can't find themselves after that, and it's that's something we should be so proud of. Yeah, it was definitely really hard, um, but I'm glad that it wasn't, like, longer, because it was getting really bad at one point, and... Um, yeah, I'm glad I was able to quit. Okay, so Barely Human is gonna do my makeup, my eye makeup. 
Yeah, literally, it's gonna like barely take any time because I do this so much. If I make you look ugly, I'm so sorry. No, I want to look. I want to look. I want to look it. If it, that, that's what's happening, I want to do it. Okay, we're gonna have to trust the process. That's the whole. That's the whole thing, okay? Let's do it. Because if you don't trust the process, it's gonna be wild and wicked. Okay. Oh my god, I'm so excited right now. I'm gonna slay you down. Yes. Okay, let me see. Okay, you have a good amount of space. Okay. Some people have like no space in their the, like like the, yeah, like their crease area. Mm -hmm. Okay, just close your eyes. You're gonna be emo down. Obviously you present very feminine, mm -hmm. but you still are a boy. Yeah. Your pronouns are he him. Yeah, I don't really care about pronouns because I know it's like confusing because I'm not a drag queen, but I'm like I feel like may I don't know. I'm confused too. So I'm just like, girl, whatever. Anything. Do you consider yourself a boy? Uh, yeah. Like, I used to think I was trans for a really long time. And I don't know. I just never, like, ever acted on it. I don't know. I'm still confused. But is a part of you still thinking you might be trans? Yeah, but at the same time, like, it's not all the time, which is weird. So I'm like, I don't know what that is. I don't know what that means. Because sometimes I feel really strongly about it. And other times I'm just like, no. So I don't know what the fuck is going on. <laughs> like, to be honest, I'm like, bitch, a mess. What, would, what does it make you feel like when someone calls you a boy? Um, you know, like right now when I was like, so you're a boy. I don't really care. But it, like when someone does say like she, her or like her, it's like, you know, it feels like yes. special, but then when someone says boy, I don't care. Like, it doesn't it doesn't bother me. So that's when it's weird. But you prefer, like, she. You prefer, you know, she's giving. She prefer that vibe. I mean, I like it. It makes me feel good. I'm like, oh, you know what I mean? Yes. But I don't, like, I wouldn't say I get mad if someone says he or whatever. I love that the younger generation is getting to a point where it's kind of like, you know what? I am what I am. And it's like, yeah. I'm not even sure what I am, and you don't need to be sure what I am, and I'm just, I'm barely human, and this is, you call me she, you call me he, it doesn't really matter to me. Yeah, the name's really adding up now, because, bitch, what am I? I don't know, bitch. Do you ever race clips on TikTok if they don't do well? Not really. I try to make sure that I'm posting stuff that, like, isn't too crazy. You know what I mean? But sometimes TikTok just, like, a video won't hit, right? Well, I post at the same time every day, so my fans kind of know when it's gonna come out. You know? Do you post every single day? Yes. Never miss the day in like quite a while. And you have to wake up and get in full makeup and everything before you film? Well, I usually shoot about five videos. Like, and in one makeup look, and then I post them for five days. Oh. So it's like, a, I have them lined up, ready to go. So then they film once a week for it, and then you just knock yeah. it out. Mm -hmm. Another thing I had to ask you about is Tar Yummy, because okay. your collab was everything. How did that come to be? I was friends with Johnny, and then I went to like, one of the parties and then I met Tara and she was so nice and someone from my label talked to someone on her team and somehow she said she wanted to make a song and I was like girl I already have a song that's doing good right now how about you just come on the remix and it'll be tea and then we don't have to worry about making something totally new and she said she was down <laughs> It was like such a vibe and basically we recorded it in the studio and then I actually took it back to my house over here and I mixed it and stuff and that's how it came about. Okay, I think that might be... Should I wait till the wig goes on before I look? Oh wait, I could put the wig, yeah. Let me get the wig. Okay. Should I hold my hair back? Okay, wait, wait, wait. Let's do this. Let's put it on like yeah. this yeah. and then just pull the back down. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Wait. Oh my, oh my gosh. gosh. <laughs> Is it everything? Wait, wait, wait. Let me, let me fix it up. Oh my God. You literally look like you're about to go on a warp tour. Wait. I'm so excited. I cannot even believe it. Stop. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I'm nervous. Oh my God. You're literally so Oh cool. my gosh. No way. Wait. I love it. The wig is crazy. <gasps> See, you look like a rocker. Oh my like gosh! Right now, yeah, we're so MySpace. Oh my god! Ooh, what's another MySpace pose we would do? Probably like this. Okay. Oh, cute. Okay. And yeah, like, that's like so MySpace. Okay, I love that idea. Are you dating anyone? 
No, I don't date people. What do you mean? Too much work. It's busyness out here. I'm trying to make a lot of money. Are you having sex? No, not really. Sometimes I feel like I'm asexual, but I'm not. You see how I'm a mess? (laughs) You're not a mess at all. Well, no, like, I just, like, I don't date people or, like, I don't really have sex either. And I don't know why. Maybe it's, like, my trauma or something, but I don't feel like fixing it right now. (laughs) Do you think it's, like, a defense mechanism to keep yourself from getting hurt? Yeah, definitely. I don't know. I've only seen crazy stuff when it came to, like, relationships, so I don't have, like, the best example. So, you know, I'll figure that out later. Do you when think, I'm like really rich. Do you think that? Do you think that you know not, not to bring our parents again? But do you think that that you brought that up? Do you think that's part of the reason why you feel like scared to get involved with someone? Yeah, probably. Like I don't think I've ever I dated girls, which is crazy. But like obviously that was when I was like fake me. That's what I call it. Like <laughs> the the other me. Mm-hmm. I like dated girls, but it was like giving Kiki time. Like we'd be like ah, like yes, girl. So have you ever dated a guy? No. Mm-mm. Have you ever hooked up with a guy? Yes. I feel bad. I feel bad. I feel bad. It was like some dude that was married and had kids. So you haven't had like a, you haven't fallen in love with a man yet? No. It is hard for me to fall in love. Maybe I'll unpack it like with a therapist, but I don't really like therapists. So maybe I won't. We'll see what happens on the next episode. <laughs> Seriously, let's do a follow up and see yeah. what's going on. Like a two year follow up would be wacky. Cause I'm like, I feel like every year I'm a new person. So. I'm sure since your fame and your your clout, I'm sure tons of guys are DMing you. I don't read them. I don't read my DMs that much, so I don't know. Well, I got you through DM. That's T. I like, I know how to like skip the, the not good ones. You got your world tour coming out, which is amazing. Yeah, I'm so excited about that. It's literally my first ever headline tour. I'm gonna be shaking butt. I wish I could do the splits. If I could do the splits, I would be doing the splits, but I can't, but you know, hair flips, all that. I really appreciate you taking the time today to meet me and to be on my show. I know you're so busy and you're just blowing up right now. So to even get this time with you is just, it means so much to me. And I'm just so excited to see where you go. Well, thank you so much for having me. It's an honor. Oh, thank you so much. No problem. Thank you for having me. I'm like remembering this moment already. I'm like picturing it and taking mental memory. It's like a moment I'm never going to well, forget. I have something else you can remember. <laughs> thank you. I'm I merch? got the merch. Yeah. Yes. Oh I my got gosh. the fan and the hoodie. Wait, let me take it off. Let me take it out right now so I can see it. Everything. That one's the internet famous hoodie. Yes. Oh my gosh. Okay, let me get the, let me get the fan. The fan is tea. Is I, I bring it everywhere. It's such a must. And you sell these on your tour and stuff too? Um, I'm just on my website. Seems. Yes. <laughs> hey. Oh. Yes. Um, now I'm... you have the official merch. Thank you so much. It's been such a good, such a good day. Thank yes, you. That was so slay. You had fun. Yes. Okay. Uh, good. That Thank was you. like really good. I've had some crazy interviews. Like that was tea. Okay, that good. felt like a vibe. Good. Like Barely Human tea. is truly one of the most down to earth, humble people, and nothing makes me happier than seeing someone like that reach such great heights. I mean, especially at 22, to have that sense of groundedness and to just seem so humble and genuine is just so refreshing to see and i just had such a good time meeting her i hope you liked my last two episodes with amp and daddy in san francisco it was the first time ever i think on my channel that i have released two episodes in one week so if you missed the second episode i linked it below in the description box so you could watch it because i really really love it and i think those two are just so educational that It's something I'm really proud of. Thank you so much for watching and for commenting and always just being so supportive of me and this journey of the show. I hope you're subscribed and I will see you very, very soon. Okay, bye-bye. Have a good day.